To understand Softcast, it's necessary to understand a little bit about the background of how Softcast came to be. And to understand how Softcast came to be, it's necessary to understand a little bit about the background of Ideal Systems. Ideal Systems this year is 25 years operating. Over those 25 years, we've grown across Asia and have 10 offices. We have two in India, two in China, Japan, Taiwan, our headquarters in Hong Kong, Thailand, Malaysia, and Singapore. From those offices, we service those local countries and the countries surrounding those offices. So, for example, we work in Indonesia, in Borneo, in the Philippines, in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, in Myanmar, and in Cambodia, and um, other countries, and sometimes as far afield as in Australia, as in the United States, and, and Europe as well. Over those 25 years, Ideal has developed a very good reputation for delivering quality solutions, design, services, and integration services for the broadcast industry. We've learned that Asia is a highly fragmented market, and we operate in multiple languages in the local countries, and we supply the systems that are available to be operated in those local languages as well. We also operate in countries that have complex tax laws and complex importation laws, and where engineers can have a lack of access to support for their broadcast systems and a lack of ac access to equipment to test new broadcast services. So understanding these issues within the uh, Asia market has led Ideal to um, aggregate the uh, software and the systems and integrate it into a product set which we call Softcast. So Softcast is essentially uh, a pre-integrated ecosystem of broadcast uh, solutions, broadcast systems. Um, and all those software solutions are detailed as follows. So Softcast is a suite of software modules for broadcasters. It runs on standard Dell workstations. So these are rack mountable workstations as opposed to servers. So they run on Windows 8. So you uh, have a cost saving benefit over Windows uh, server licenses because you can use Windows 8 or even Windows 7 at this time. Um, Softcast, the product, because it's software, can be delivered and installed over the internet and supported over the internet. So again, in areas where there's difficult importation, difficult taxation, um, this makes a, a market difference because the local broadcasters can typically get access to Dell because Dell are very heavily present across Asia and yet the complex broadcast systems which are now based in the software can be easily downloaded over the internet. So the limitation on the broadcasters access to broadcast technology is now limited to their access to the internet. So the Softcast modules, what's in Softcast? What, what, what are the, the key parts that uh, Softcast offers? So Softcast contains a number of modules and they can be used as, a, as the name suggests as modules or they are pre-integrated, so modules can be chained together with no inherent integration costs. And this is a big deal in the broadcast business because for the larger broadcasters where they can afford to have various manufacturers' solutions integrated and customized to suit their needs, the smaller broadcasters and typically uh, new entrants to the broadcast market, uh, growing new broadcasters or broadcasters in uh, emerging countries that have limited access to budget and limited access to, to capital. So they don't typically have the budget to integrate complex systems. So the, the Softcast modules can be used on their own or used as chained together um, modules in a com more complex or, or, or a more uh, inclusive broadcast solution. So included in the uh, Softcast system are channel in a box. So this is uh, using a, a server per channel and be it SD or HD or simulcast. Um, lots of options here. Um, traditional automation. So uh, in some cases people are still using, uh, or in a lot of cases people, you know, customers want to keep using their uh, existing graphic systems for example, or they might want to add subtitle systems. And, and not everything comes in a channel in the box yet, so it's necessary to drive these devices. Um, so uh, in a lot of the move to uh, channel in a box and, and very IT based broadcasting around the world, 
uh, it's it's been uh, kind of missed that there's still a need for a traditional automation system that can um, use uh, and automate uh, video outputs from video servers and video ports and, and, and drive graphics inserters and subtitle devices and, and so on, uh, either by IP or by even at this time uh, serial, uh, serial device drivers. So um, in that sense, because we have the channel in the box automation, and we have the traditional automation, we, we technically in Softcast can call it a, a hybrid automation system. It can, it can operate in, in either mode, either it's uh, self, self-contained or uh, is a more traditional uh, automation with device drivers. So again, the you know, typical content uh, life cycle, so it, it has ingest, uh, it has play out, and that play out can include the graphics, so we can put the graphics in the box. If there's a high-end graphics requirement, the, the CGs and uh, you know more complex uh, graphics requirements, the license can be moved onto another Dell box and 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 put downstream as well because you know, obviously there's a CPU overhead requirement for all of this processing. The system includes a, a module for media asset management. Now this is quite a comprehensive media asset management system. Um, so it, it involves the workflows, it involves a, a very intuitive interface for creating workflows. So um, it's a graphic user interface that can create workflows and how content is moved through various processes within the organization. Um, the system also includes a full NRCS or a newsroom computer system. So this actually um, provides everything from editorial overview um, to uh, the MOS integration to the teleprompter and various uh, newsroom hardware as well. Um, it has a module for live feed and, and, and compliance, um, which is uh, you know, censorship. So a lot of channels, um, imported channels into countries need to be examined for, for uh, content that maybe contravenes local laws. So it allows a channel to be time delayed, maybe some content uh, removed or uh, replaced, or even some blur to be put on, on some visible clips that uh, don't want to be broadcast. Um, or even start to blank out some potentially some uh, um, some logos or branding that uh, the, the uh, broadcaster doesn't have rights to show. So um, as a module for this, um, very interestingly, and, and and what's proven very interesting uh, to the marketplace very early on is the uh, is the traffic system, the broadcast schedule planning. So. There are a number of broadcast uh, schedule planning systems in the marketplace today. Uh, they tend to be quite specialized, quite uh, um, expensive to implement and to train, but specifically they tend to be, there's quite an overhead in integrating these into the, into the broadcast system. And as with all the other modules in Softcast, uh, the uh, schedule planner, the traffic system, uh, has the native integration so it can be added on uh, without any uh, integration requirements and then just all that is required at that point is a customization of the workflows that the uh, broadcaster might want and then again there's a sub module from the broadcast and schedule planning system which is a broadcast ad sale so again this is planning advertising campaigns and revenues and commissions for uh, sales representatives and so on so at this, at where we are now, we're we're, we're coming into uh, April 2012, 2014, rather, and uh, this is this is the the current lineup. But the Softcast ecosystem itself will be expanded. We will add more modules into the system, so it, it's going to be a dynamic space. So this is why I said where we are now. So uh, a closer look at the system, just graphically, um, you can see, as I mentioned, we have uh, the baseband ingest, you know, which is as typical things like VTR control. And that VTR control is, uh, you know, Sony nine pin and, and standard. We have lines input, um, studio feeds, and so on. So uh, you know, we have typical baseband ingest, um, and that ingest can also be fed from the traffic system in terms of uh, uh, schedules for a schedule record. Um, uh, underneath them, we've got the file ingest, which uh, is can be set up just for basic watch folders, or can be more uh, comprehensively managed by the MAM system, which we'll get to in a moment. 
Um, there's also a good uh, integration into uh, um, standard NLEs, so the likes of Sony Vegas, uh, Adobe Premiere, Final Cut Pro. Uh, metadata is preserved in their craft editors and, and, and uh, available into the MAM system. And likewise, rough markups done on MAM uh, uh, clients can be uh, seen within the uh, uh, NLE editing tools as well. Um, at the bottom here, we can see this, uh, the, the newsroom, so the, from the editor's view of the newsroom to the journalist interface and remote access. Um, and this is a full newsroom with newsroom graphics, breaking news capacities and all that, and, and has its own news uh, playout system and news graphic system associated with it, as it does the Moss Gateway as well for um, uh, prompters and, and uh, rundowns to, uh, to the newsroom itself. Uh, central here in our diagram is is the uh, the the MAM system, the media asset management system. So the media asset management system again is a workflow manager and automates the tasks of things like proxy generation or transco transcoding that might be required for various profiles for iOS and Android and and web delivery. Uh, managing the uh, the central NAS is a critical factor. Managing the uh, the high and low watermarks on the on the uh, on the central NAS, and also interestingly, um, is uh, the ability to uh, actually do an LTO manager. So it's a, it has its own archive manager as well, uh, and a connection and an ability to connect to remote cloud services or, or cloud archives too. Um, sitting over the MAM system, then on the top is the uh, scheduling and traffic uh, module. So as I mentioned, this is a full traffic schedule planning system that allows people to build up the grids and create the, uh, the schedules that will be imported uh, into the automation system which is over here so we get over here into the automation system and again the automation system can be a traditional automation system that uses a device driver for controlling downstream devices or can be a full channel in a box system as well um, and then out past this uh, you know, secondary graphics, more intensive graphics, 3D graphics, um, streaming servers, uh, the time delay or looping censoring, and, and of course, uh, uh, logging, compliance logging as well. So this is a very comprehensive ecosystem, um, but critically, it's all software based. It all runs off the same database. So even if you only use one module or you use a few modules, they share the same database. And also, all of the UIs for the system are local, locally uh, uh, translatable. And uh, Ideal Systems have already translated this into Thai and into Japanese, and the Chinese version is on its way as well. So um, you can use the system uh, in, in the local language, as it is critical in, in key markets, in, in Japan, for example, or in Korea, uh, where, where operators prefer to have their core broadcast systems uh, available with local language UIs, but it's populated dynamically from a table. So from a support perspective, the support engineers, when they're on the system, will just log in with a different login and they'll see it uh, in in their support language or in, in English or whichever language they're, they're supporting the system in. Um, so this was launched in January of 2014, this ecosystem, and uh, our early adopter for, for the product actually uh, was a broadcaster, uh, an Australian media company called Brand New Media. Uh, Brand New Media operate a, a number of channels, an expanding number of channels, no less, um, and uh, based and headquartered in Australia, they have uh, studios and, and offices in, uh, in the United States and in Europe, um, and uh, Critically, their uh, uh, broadcast and transmission facility is located in Singapore, which is uh, uh, quite close to uh, Ideal Systems Singapore office. So um, they were looking for a, a playout system, they're looking for an automation system, they're looking for a MAM system, they're looking for ingest, and uh, you know, essentially all of the elements that they were looking for were within the ecosystem of Softcast. So it, it proved to be a very good uh, coming uh, to market uh, customer for the softcast and deployment uh, for softcast. So, um, going back to the uh, ecosystem, they they had a requirement, as I say, for baseband ingest and file ingest. They had a requirement for the traffic and scheduling actually came later. They they added that on to their to their system. Um, 
and uh, media asset management and, and uh, automation play out with, uh, with full CG and graphics capacity and also compliance logging as well. So, um, you know, again, it's a, it's a typical broadcaster, they're multi-channel operation, they, they supply to uh, cable TV operators, uh, they supply to IPTV operators and they supply uh, straight to the web as well. So, you know, representing a, a cross section of a multi-channel operator of a, of a broadcaster and, and a content pro um, uh, content creator as well. They've got studios um, in, in all of their locations of studios here in Singapore where they create their own content. So again, the media asset management system is sitting on top of this uh, uh, high bandwidth available uh, NAS storage from from uh, from from small tree that allows them to uh, um, edit um, high res files and even up to uh, uh, editing in 4K files in some cases as well. So. As part of this video, um, we've got uh, Colin Eng, uh, who is the broadcast manager at uh, uh, Brand New Media, and he's going to take us through some of the elements that uh, they uh, deployed and, and the experience of uh, using uh, Softcast at their facility. So, uh, kind of a, a quick technical overview of what's in Brand New Media's facility. So, again, as we said, the the, the, uh, the, the center of the system are, are standard Dell workstations. They're rack mountable. They look like servers, but they're actually PCs that are just rack mountable industrial strength fans and so on. But uh, again, cost effective because uh, they uh, use Windows 7 as opposed to um, uh, uh, Windows Server. So. Uh, you know, they're, they're on a router, um, they've got uh, um, file transfer content being managed by the, by, by the uh, media asset management system coming from the NAS uh, and dropped and caching and, and playing out their, their various channels. And then uh, on that network then they've got various interfaces onto the Softcast system for editing, uh, schedule preparation, ad sales, content preview, ingest, uh, quality uh, control. Um, multi-channel uh, view for looking at all the channels on on a, on a single UI, and and also master control, which is you know single channel operation for for operators want to take control of a specific channel as well. So again, it's a uh, you know a, a, a nice uh, example of a softcast deployment. Um, it integrates with the proxy generation, integrates with the production systems, um, and uh, touches a you know a basically across the bottom here. You can see it's touching across all of the uh, various parts of the business, from the editing to the uh, to the traffic, ad sales, and a whole lot. So a very uh, uh, inclusive system for for brand new media, um, and for brand new media, the ease of deployment and the speed of delivery was very important. So the fact that it was running on standard Dell. Of Available locally meant that the uh, Dell hardware could be uh, acquired and installed very quickly, a lead time of less than 10 days, uh, with four hour call out support from Dell. So, great uh, cost savings because you know the, the hardware had, didn't have to be flown from Europe or North America, and uh, you know it's just locally available, standard off the shelf, with great support from Dell. Standard Windows is already installed, so, very quick install. Um, the software then is installed on it locally, um, so the Dell servers go in, uh, remote access to uh, the Softcast engineers and, and create the install. It's a very quick and easy channel setup, very quick and easy broadcast setup, and thus very cost effective as well. So full functional channels, easy and quick delivery. Uh, I think that uh, Softcast has has changed the delivery model for broadcasters, and certainly, uh, what we've seen in, a, in 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 brand new media was a very quick deployment. And what we're now seeing is the interest, specifically from countries where access to technology, access to broadcast equipment can be more difficult. We're seeing dramatic amount of interest coming from. Uh, Myanmar, from Cambodia, from Indonesia, from countries that have high tax, high import duties. And the idea of being able to download the software for the systems is very, very uh, key factor for these broadcasters. So, um, as you'll see after this, we'll, we'll, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Colin Eng, and uh, he's the broadcast manager, as I say, at Brand New Media, um, and uh, let him have a uh, give you a, a guide through his system. Thank you.